Jahan Dotson got the football quite a bit. Well, definitely quite a bit more than what he got the ball in the Atlanta game, and so did Curtis Samuel. I think Taylor Heineke did a much better job spreading the football around in this past game against the Giants than certainly he did the game before. Now, whether if that was because the coaches told him, hey, you need to look at these other receivers, or if it just was a natural progression by Taylor Heineke, don't know. But all I know is Jahan Dotson, he is back. Now, I had a video that came out a couple of weeks ago, or not a couple of weeks ago, but it was a couple of videos back where the video title was, is Jahan Dotson considered a bust or something like that? And of course, a lot of people were going to comment on the video title alone and saying, you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, obviously you don't watch the video because I do not dare I didn't even insinuate that Jahan Dotson was a bust. Yeah, maybe the title was a little clickbaity, but uh, certainly I felt that Jahan Dotson was just, I think they were slowly trying to get him back into the game plan, as well as Taylor Heineke just had developed more of a kinship or relationship with Terry McLaurin since he has played with him since 2020. It's just kind of a natural thing that happens between quarterback and wide receiver. So I felt that in time, and I said this in that video, that I felt that it's things will develop and John Dotson will get more targets, and he did. He got more targets in the Giants game, scored that touchdown. Terry McLaurin scored a touchdown, and Curtis Samuel had also scored. Well, he didn't score a touchdown, but he made some big plays as well. So... I thought Taylor Heineke did a very good job of spreading the football around in this game. And so you got to give your hats off to A, Terry, or Taylor Heineke for finding these other receivers, getting them involved, and plus Jahan Dotson for showing you that he is not a bust. Jahan Dotson was definitely worth the draft pick. And I am excited for his future here. Both him and Terry McLaurin, and Curtis Samuel as well. Man, I mean, we've got a great wide receiving core that is, I mean, we should be putting up a lot more points than what we have been putting up, which brings me to this other point. A lot of people are starting to sour on, you know, Taylor Heineke, and the thing is, is that, look at his record right now. He's 5-1-1. People are calling for Carson Wentz to come back because they're like, Carson Wentz has the better arm. Okay, I I do agree. Carson Wentz has a much stronger arm than what Heineke does. Let's look at the records. Carson Wentz is two and four. Carson Wentz was a statue back there. He took more, a lot more sacks than what Heineke did. There was a lot more drives that got stalled because of Wentz taking sacks. And Wentz also threw the, uh, turned the ball over quite a bit as well. So, I don't really understand why you would put Carson Wentz back in there. Fans are are a fickle nature, I believe, especially in this, um, especially in this group. I mean, I even now that we have seen Baker Mayfield uh, get cut from the the Carolina Panthers. Now we're seeing Washington Commanders fans salivating over getting Baker Mayfield and saying that we need to cut Carson Wentz and pick up Baker Mayfield. And and the same fans who are like, we need to sit Taylor Heineke and put in Carson Wentz. Folks, this doesn't make sense to me at all. Just ride with Taylor Heineke. We'll keep Carson Wentz in there. It is way too late in the season to try to get Baker Mayfield up to speed. And what does that tell you when Baker Mayfield can't get back into the starting lineup in Carolina and overtake Sam Darnold? What does that tell you? And what does that tell you when the Browns cut him loose? What I mean, what does that tell you? That tells you that Maybe he has the Carson Wentz syndrome. So why do you want to go through the same exact thing that we're going through with Carson Wentz right now? It doesn't make any sense, folks. Think. 
really, I mean, you got to be intelligent about this. You stick with Taylor Heineke. Is Taylor Heineke the long-term solution? Probably not. Probably not. Hopefully, maybe Sam Howell is. But Taylor Heineke is not the long-term solution right now. He is the right-now solution, and he's winning. So you keep on giving it to Taylor Heineke, and let's just ride it out with him. The you know the players seem to rally around Taylor Heineke. They love playing with him, so why would you make the switch? It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Please consider subscribing to this channel. I need all the subscriptions. I need the views. Please watch the video before you comment on the video title. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.